Hamilton's labeled Fairchild. Yeah. Yeah. You have an extra one, too. And Pathology knows this is coming up. They've yeah. been notified. Uh, Shoe, you gotta tuck these arms in. Okay. You gotta tuck the arms in, huh? Steady, 120 over 70. Are we ready? Just give it a sec, Doctor. Yes, sir. Okay, let me have the scope. Suction, please. Okay, Keith, there it is. Come in and take a look at this. See that small granular lesion down in there? Mm, yeah. That's the one. Let's get a piece of that. Have a punch, please. When will we know? Well, we should have this back on Monday. We'll go into the lab today. Oh, Jesus, Gary. She's got to sweat out the whole weekend. I don't think there's much we can do about it. Well, who's the pathologist? Carlson. He's the best. Yeah, you're right. Hi. Hi. You got a step from Dr. Carlson. How's the traffic? Oh, typical Friday. It was just terrible. Is this your last pickup? Yes. Well, it looks like I'll be here all weekend. Why does it take so long? It's complicated. It just takes time. Does Jerry have an opinion? No. Do you? It's either he's benign. I wish I could share that feeling. That's what I think. Are you going to tell Harv? I'm not sure. You know how he is, and he's been under such a lot of pressure lately. I'm really worried about him, Keith. He's not been himself at all lately. Are you going to tell anyone? <coughs> what for? Sometimes. If it's benign, I'll hit it. Sea above top sea. No, no, not a great idea. Well, if it's malignant, they'll know soon enough about it anyway. <clears throat> what if it is malignant? We'll talk about that when we know. I want to talk about it now. Am I going to be able to sing again? Well, it depends. That's why there's no use discussing it until we know. And you won't know until Monday. Would you like a quick cup of coffee? No, I've got to get back. Thank you so much, Keith. Get some rest. Try not to talk too much. It's easier said than done. You sure you're all right? I'm fine. I'll call you tomorrow. OK. Bye.
Uh, let's see. Uh, Josh called to say that he will be staying at the Beverly Hills and that he's bringing a friend. Anyone we know? <laughs> Do you know Fanny? No, she's new. Yeah. Uh, Kate called and said she'll be in at 10.30 on American. Would you like me to pick her up? No, I think I'll do that myself. No tea? I've got a tickle in my throat. I just feel like water. Mm. What, what you making? Uh, stew for the night. Looks good. Mm, it is. You know, the whole family's going to be in for dinner tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And are we all set for Sunday? Sure. I don't need to talk about the torches for the beach. And the band knows what time they're coming. Everything, darling. Good. Are you catching a call or something? I just think it's an allergy or something. Mm. You wouldn't put onions in that stew. <laughs> you know how Harvey's about onions. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy. Dr. Carlson, it's for you. I'll take it in there. All right. Dr. Carlson. Hi, Phil. On that Fairchild biopsy. Yeah, Kate? Yeah, I need a big favor. What's that? If it's possible uh, to view it on Sunday, I could meet you in the lab. guys in, but uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Dope factory on wheels. Jesus. Who is it? Me, Corey. Me who? Mr. Fairchild. I do hope you remember me. Open the gate, please. The friggin' sprinklers went on. Ask me how my day was. How was your day? I'm not gonna tell you. It all started this morning. The minute I got in the car, I should have known. The damn thing, brand new, sounds like it's making coffee. You know, if it had broken down before I got to the office, I could have saved myself this whole rotten day. You know where it is now? It's on the yellow divider in the middle of the Pacific Coast Highway, somewhere 
down there. Everybody's pissed off at me, and I had to walk about a mile and a half to find a payphone to call the AA so that they would come and get the goddamn car. Why couldn't you use the car phone? You can't use a car phone when the engine is dead. It won't work. My Jesus. And then when I get to the office, I find about 7,000 <laughs> happy birthday cards. Everybody's stunned that I'm going to be 60. Oh, we never thought you'd make it. <laughs> yeah, roses are red. <laughs> roses are red. Yeah, tulips are yellow. You're certainly getting to be a very old fellow. That's from Asshole, my secretary. Jesus, and then she... Where the hell are my cigarettes? Oh, I forgot I gave them up. Then she tells me that Bill and Bob are early for their two-hour appointment. I want to tell you, I do not have any conception as to how the hell they became multimillionaires with those goddamn marts all over the country. They are... No they have the aesthetic realization of a newt. Jesus, they keep saying, oh, these are the supreme, wonderful, wonderful markets. We want them to look gorgeous. They do not understand that a building and a structure and the materials themselves can be aesthetically pleasing, for Christ's sake, because when they get what they want and they tell me they want it beautiful, then they say, well, what are we going to do with this space? What's that tower for? The tower's there because it's beautiful, asshole. Jesus, a week and a half down the... <laughs> do you know what they, <laughs> what they want to put in front of the produce department? A huge sign that says, we be food. What? You heard me, we be food. What does it mean? I don't know what the hell it means, but Bill and Bob know what it means because they be dumb. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I should have been what I wanted to be, a whorehouse piano player. I tell you what something you else, love. I love you, but I'm never going to make my 60th. Harvey, why are you limping? I lost my shoe running through the sprinklers, hit a rock in the ivy, probably broke my toe. Again. Christ, I don't know everything, Age. Remember when I went last week, you know, to, uh, uh, what's his name? You know, the, the ortho doctor for all those athletes? And I said, why in the hell do all of my muscles ache, all of the extremities, the joints, and my toe? I've never had pain in my toes before. Take all of those damn tests. I see him this afternoon. He says, it's probably bursitis. Or it could be a mild arthritic condition common to people your age, unquote. So, oh, and then he says, the entire thing may be due to stress. A couple of hundred dollars. He says, I've got stress. For Christ's sake, everybody has stress. Stress is normal. I'll give him stress. I'll put him with Bill and Bob for a week. Now, that be stress. Yes. Know what it is? Gout. Well, stress can lead to gout. Oh, you're damn right it can. I, there is no pain in the world like gout. It has to be gout. Right now, I bet you that my uric acid count is 14 or 15. Henry VIII didn't have 15. I got 15. That asshole's given me with a bursitis. <laughs> Harvey. Huh? I know you feel lousy, but I have to tell you, you never look better. Are you out of your mind? For God, look at this body. It's falling apart. Christ, I got on the scales this morning, three pounds I've lost. You're telling me that I never looked better? Not Jesus. 21. Well, Jesus, that's easy for you to say. You're a hell of a lot younger than I am. And you're a dancer. I'm a singer. Well, you dance a lot when you're singing. Come here. What? Come here. Don't now break stop. anything. Stop. Just stop, honey. You're going to oh. make yourself really sick. <laughs> Look, why don't you take a nice, warm shower, put on a robe, and come and have a rest. You'll feel lots better. Huh? Want to sneak a peek at Stiffy? Huh? <laughs> you wanna? Oh, God, do I wanna, but I have hit uh... Have your bath, and we do a little change. We slip up the highway, we go to Andre's and get one of those wonderful lobsters. Oh, honey, I'd love light to. I was just thinking we'd stay in tonight, you know? Corey's oh, got a great stew. Oh, uh -huh. I just told you about the gout. You're telling me I'm gonna eat that man's stew? Oh, he is the serial killer. I Jesus. did not put a single onion in No, no, it's the other stuff that gives me the gout. The onions only make me fart. I tell you now, I eat that stuff by midnight. That room is a disaster area. Harvey. Oh, come on, listen, love. Please, Jesus, after today. Come on, will you? God, I need a change. Some kind of a different ambiance. Did you realize that for the last, about a month or something, we've just stayed home like a couple of old mopes that are sitting in wheelchairs ready well, to honey, retire you're the one that wanted to stay home. Well, I only stayed home because I thought you wanted to stay home. Oh, please. Oh, come on. Please, come on. You gotta get active. Huh? Okay, I'll tell Corey. Right. But I'm gonna take a rest first, okay? Of course. And I don't like the way you think. You think old. You gotta change. You gotta get active. You know, remember that experiment with the mice? You know, as long as they kept them moving, their brains got bigger. They.
Once I had a better time, I can't remember when. I'm sorry I was in such a rotten mood earlier, love. I don't, I'm just trying to figure out what the hell is wrong with me and why I feel... Anyway. This little mother over here for now. I don't know what it may be, you know? I have come, I hope, to a decision that I may not, if I ever live through Janice Kern's epic building, I may not design any more private homes after this thing. I tell you, you know why? I formulated a theory that success breeds failure. In this, you see, the more money you get, the more important the private homes, at least, that you are going to do, the more compromises you have to make. And you know why? You spend decades, like I did, trying to get famous and getting clients that are richer and richer. But the problem is the client is always right, you see, because it's his money. He's never right, but he's always right because it's his money. Anyhow, they equate personal taste in direct proportion to the size of their bank account. And the more money they've got, the more they become the great arbiter, you know, of what is exactly right. In, in the, they don't know the hell the difference between any aesthetic value and the function and the fine line between the two. But they assume they know everything. They assume that they know everything. Jesus, yeah. just once, I would love to be able to do a building where I could say, you know, like you would say, ah, that's a bird, or, or that's a Neff, or that's a, you know, a Frank Lloyd Wright. Well, that's a fair child. There's not one building that I can really say that no, about. No, I disagree. You know, oh, come on, dear. Jesus Christ. Anyhow, with Janice, who wouldn't know a million from a grunion, for Christ's sake. Okay. Here she is. She was a, a million. What's you know, a million. A million is the large frame that holds woods. You know what a... Don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Anyhow, she is a... Marries this poor old guy in his mid-70s or something or other. You know, a sweet sugar daddy, and she convinces... What is she, in her 30s, early 30s? I don't know. Convinces him he's the world's greatest lover. He tries to bury the Herman every night. He croaks. Well, what the hell else? And then bingo, she's a millionaire. Hires me to build her mansion. And Jesus Christ, every time... You know, she gives rise to the couldn't we syndrome, you know. She's the original um girl. Mm, that's lovely. Mm, mm. That's lovely, but couldn't we... <laughs> Did I tell you what the hell happened to... What is it, day before yesterday? I designed a staircase of lucite and steel, free-floating, double helix. It was it, it, orgasmic. It was so beautiful. It came out better than I even thought in my mind. It would rival the one in the Vatican, you know, which has nothing to do with the one that I did. But anyway, it's there. Now it's done. And I'm, ooh, Jesus, and it's getting ready to be hung. And she walks in with a, oh, mmm, Arv. That's wonderful. That's lovely. Mm. But couldn't we? I went for her. So help me God, I was going to garret her and take 25 years. Jesus Christ. I've been chewing on the same piece of meat for about five freaking minutes. And it's as tough as a Cossack sack. Where the hell is Andre? Andre. I can't believe this. Andre? Wait a minute, huh? Hi, Hi, Harvey. Hi, is, uh, Harvey. Is everything okay? Mm -hmm. How did you cook the lobster? Well, uh, the chef cooks the lobster. Well, how did he cook it? Well, uh, I think he uh, takes hot boiling water. Uh -huh. He put it in boiling water. Okay. You know what happens when you put a live lobster in boiling water? Uh, he dies? First, he goes, Ugh. Harvey. Yeah, you're eating a traumatized lobster. Uh, you have another way to cook the lobster? Take the pot, fill it with a couple of bottles of dry white wine, turn the heat on, and when it's just lukewarm, you put the live lobster in the warm wine. He likes that. That is one happy lobster. <laughs> Keep turning the heat up. By the time that the wine is bubbling, the lobster doesn't give a shit. Is he a relaxed lobster? Who doesn't give a right. shit? Hello, Hello, yeah, no, not my best friends in life, my fabulous neighbors. <laughs> I'm so crazy about you, and even you, Gil. <laughs> Thanks a lot, though. Oh, sure. Hello, Andre. Hi, baby. Listen, if you two aren't going to let me sell your house, why don't you just let me move in with you? Andre, I mean, you could support me. I could, uh, I could retire. You could teach me about nutrition. I could just stand around glowing and regular. Oh, it'll be great. I think I'm going to get a drink and let Andre right, feed yeah. me. Right. It's not such a bad deal. I sleep with him once a month, get three squares a week free, whether I need it or not. Goodbye, Harvey. Goodbye. <laughs> Gil, I'm in love with your husband. I am too, Harvey. 
Well, good. I'll see you at the party Sunday, mm. and I'll bring my pajamas. Mmm, delicious. As my mother used to say, she's mental. <laughs> Is that all you're gonna eat? The soup? I don't feel very hungry now. All right. Are you all right? I mean, you know, your voice sounds kind of funny. Well, you're not coming down with a cold or something, are you? Huh? No, I'm You know, we've got the tour in, what, four weeks? So don't screw that one up. <laughs> You've been vocalizing? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just think I have an allergy of some kind. Oh, That's God, don't mention the word to me. Jesus. Do you know I still have never breathed through both sides of my nose at the same time? Sixty damn years. Well, it was the all of the tonsils and adenoids. Regenerated five times I had them. Well, you know that. I think that's where I got those three mastoids. Oh, come on, eat up. We're gonna miss Josh. Freeze! Let the girl go. I think he's adorable. He's wonderful. I wish he'd learn how to shave. Oh, I think that's the macho thing these days. You know, it kind of defines the contours of the face. Oh, but it's grubby. You all right? No. Sort of messed up the weekend, huh? Yeah. What are we going to do about that? Well, we could start by me showing you the finer points of Bourbon Street. Join us next week when we see Tony Wilder go... I wonder if that was Fanny. Who the hell is Fanny? That's the young lady he's bringing down this weekend. Well, what, uh... Yeah, what happened to Pamela? Well, that was the last time. Oh, you... He's going to wear it out. <laughs> Not your son. For those times when someone can't be there. And Christian, they're so... There are some interesting statistics to support the belief that some people are genetically predisposed to ulcers. Caucasian Can you turn the sound down a bit? More ulcer prone than American Indians. Mm. Men are Can you more turn the sound down? Women. I'd United like to States, talk. The ratio of men to women with ulcers is two to mm. one. I've been wondering if this tour is such a good idea. What? No, no, wait. What the hell? Wait, wait, just hear me through. You've been feeling poorly and... Uh, Shopping center isn't finished. Oh, well, well, hey, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, do, do not blame this on me. I'll be fine. Bullshit, huh? No, no, really. I've never seen you so unglued, hon. You want to know what it is? Oh, I know what it is. No, it's more than being 60. It's. <laughs> I never. I never did what I wanted to do. Time has run out. Oh. No, really, I, you know what I keep thinking of? In the last week or two, with a time, one glorious night, I had a revelation. Mm. Absolute blinding flash. I was going to be the next Frank Lloyd Wright. Wow! Well, you are, Oh, no, no, I'm not. I never will be. But, oh, my God, there's so much I wanted to do, and... There's no time. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Wouldn't it make more sense no, if no. we just cancel the whole thing? Uh, please. If I went out tomorrow and built the damn Taj Mahal, I'd... Remember the first tour? When I followed you all over Japan, what the hell was it? 14 cities in 20 weeks? I haven't had a piece of raw fish since. <laughs> huh? You remember? It was fun, wasn't it? Oh, God. Mm. Remember when you couldn't hack it anymore and you said you had to go home? And you took the bullet train, and I saw you off and cried. And then two hours later, you showed up in Kyoto because you couldn't bear to be apart. You knocked my socks off. Oh, I knocked off more than that. <laughs> that was the happiest time of my life. And I want to do it again. I don't think an architecture's going to make me happy.
な。Bigger than my breast. I think I'll have an operation where they just slice you across here and lift the cookies and candies right into your boobs. Oh, magnificent! I'll be so delicious and molestable. I was molested as a kid, you know. You're supposed to stay by whom? And I'm supposed to stay by everybody. And you're supposed to laugh, and it's supposed to be a great joke. But it's not funny because I was molested by my best girlfriend's father. No. Although I was never sure if it was really molesting, just some gentle stroking. We used to go in the bathroom and open the door, and he had this big erection. I thought that's the way penises were supposed to be. <laughs> Actually, they are whenever I see them. Uh huh. Well, lovely to see you. Got to dash. You need any help for the party tomorrow? I'd love it. Oh, good, because I'm absolutely free. I haven't sold a house in a month. Oh, but, oh, but please don't worry yourself about it. Are you all right? Sure. You look absolutely gorgeous. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Holly. <laughs> Hey, love. Why didn't you wake me this morning? I could go walking with you. Good morning. Mwah. You were sleeping like a babe, and I was up so early. Oh. Well, anyhow, I just remembered. I got a 9 o'clock doctor's appointment and then a business thing, so I a can't go pick up Kate at the airport. Yeah. On a Saturday? Uh, yeah. With whom? With Keith. What for? Well, I got to get the uric acid. I feel like shit. That's what for. Did he call you? Well, I don't... What the hell difference does that make? No, I... Huh? I just wondered, that's all. Oh. Okay, I'll pick up Katie Q. Yeah. We'll see you back here. I sincerely hope so. I love you. Aren't you going to shave? I've got to uh, uh, rest the skin. for. i got a tiny little itch going there. Oh, Christ, I hope it's not, uh, what is it? Yeah, contact dermatitis. I'm so glad you could make it. Yeah, me too. Ah, there you go. Well, Harv. Mm -hmm. Your heart is strong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you physically whatsoever. There's nothing wrong with me? No, you're in great shape. Uh, I'm in great shape. Keith, did you ever hear the story about the fighter that was losing badly, you know, to the other guy? He's getting the hell kicked out of him, and he comes back to his corner between rounds, and his manager says, keep up the good work, kid, because the other guy isn't laying a glove on you. And the fighter says, then you better keep your eye on the referee, because somebody is kicking the shit out of me. What the hell do you mean nothing's wrong with me? You're kicking the shit out of yourself, Harv. Jeez, what the hell do you... Jesus... Oh, God, I love you. You're a wonderful doctor, and... and you're missing something because every bone in my body, every nerve, every fiber, every... everything. Jesus, I feel terrible all the time. I'm depressed. I have headaches. I can't function. I... On top of everything else, Keith, I think I'm impotent. It's in your mind, Harv. That's why I think you should see a psychiatrist. Oh. And shave. Well, it should be kind of fun. I mean, we've got a nice big tent on the beach, and 
Andre's going to cater. Or, you know, just ribs and chicken and Mexican food. And there's a little band. And a really great crowd are coming. So, uh, with any luck, you'll have a good time. It sounds great. You're very quiet. I'm a little tired. I didn't get much sleep last night. What's up, hon? Steve? You know, he... The entire length of our relationship, he's been telling me to be honest and loosen up and, and say what I mean and... and the one time that I say what I'm really feeling and look what happens well what happens he couldn't handle it we had this unbelievable fight and and that's it, we broke up. Let's not tell Dad about it, okay? I just don't want to talk about it anymore. Fine. Oh, my God. There's a fortune teller in Malibu. You're kidding. No. things that maybe we could change. Here. Sure. Come on, I'll show them to you. Uh-huh. I've been out in the balcony, and I was looking at this beautiful view. Is that a river? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, yeah. And I turned around, and I looked at my beautiful house, yeah. and I thought to myself, I know what could be more beautiful. What? Dados. Dados. I want dados all across that ceiling edge. And Basha on the dado. Basha on the dado. Oh, so but first, we have to settle the construction here. here. Huh? No, let me sit down here. Sit down. We can talk well, while we really, eat. Huh? Let's have some caviar. Oh, Christ, I can't eat that. That's a oh, tactile problem. It only gets to here. The strawberry is the one thing that makes me break out in a rash. I'm well, sorry. Can you have some bread? Yeah, your bread's good. Can you have a bun? Thank you. I am so excited about getting this place finished. I can't yeah, tell me too. you. And I was thinking about the master bedroom. Oh, there's something I haven't told you yet. What? Could we just lose those sheer walls? I want glass, all glass, so that at night, after making love, I can walk out into the terrace with those sliding glass doors opening, and I can feel the wind on my body and smell that ocean and just see those stars. And hear the roof crash down. That's our only support wall. Yes. Oh, Harvey, you'll figure that out. I will. <laughs> and look at that ceiling. I mean, it just rises up like the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> I mean, oh. Could we get a painter to come in and just, just paint a mural across that ceiling? It would be spiritual. Oh, did you forget to shave this morning, Lord? Excuse me. What is it? Damn. Oh, are you all right? Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, God, these boots are killing me. What? Oh. Harvey. Would you help me with my boots? Sure. Well, you think you're gonna have to turn around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Uh, Let me loosen this up for you. 
ready? deal to me. Well, maybe you should see a psychiatrist. about here and I look like one of those hippos and Fantasia. Alex <laughs> Larry. Good. He's frustrated. I also gave up sex. Uh, ladies, you like something to eat? Oh, yeah. How about a seafood salad? <laughs> yeah. All right, Not one right seafood me. salad coming Thanks. up. Okay. Well, Josh just called me. He's uh, at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Fanny. Fanny? <laughs> Fanny. <laughs> Fanny. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you see that interview with the guy? Yeah, wasn't that great? I think he comes off really well. Ooh, thanks. I think he's going to be a thank you, big star. Yeah. I bet your dad has a problem with that. Where is dad? Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. I, uh, been swearing a lot uh, lately. How long has it been since your last confession? I don't remember the exact date. Using the Lord's name in vain a great deal. In yeah. six months? Yes. Uh, had some impure thoughts, and uh, I have not been treating others as I would have them treat me. Anything else? I nearly committed adultery. Define nearly. Well, it didn't really happen. I mean, nothing. Uh, I've been having a lot of trouble with this lady lately, you see. And, and I was just trying to make peace. That's all. She misinterpreted the signals. It wasn't, wasn't free. It was mostly mental, you see. And uh, cause something could happen. I can't. I can't function. Father, I, God, maybe I'm, I'm sorry. I've. I've Maybe I shouldn't be speaking to you. I should speak to a doctor or another man or... or I am a man. I'm a man of God. You're in the right place for your body and your soul. Well, uh... At this point in my life, I, I don't understand anything. I, I feel like... A failure, uh, you know, as an architect and, and as a husband, a, a fraud. I, I became an architect for all the wrong reasons, and I'm a failed Catholic. And uh, God, I haven't been to confession father for 36 years. My senior year at Notre Dame, and I only did it then because of my roommate. He kept 
Lord, if envy is a sin, I'm... I'm beyond redemption. It was all American everything, you know. I just... It was... Uh, it's the country's best fullback and an honor student, and he had every girl in town, and I loved him, but I hated him. Phony Tony Barragoni. I haven't seen him since we had a fight about a girl. I can't even remember her name. Elena Montefasco. Tony? Hello, Harv. Ah! <laughs> Oh, I wanted to tell Mob that story. Mob, the greatest thing happened to Fanny and I the other day on the set. We were shooting somewhere down in Bourbon Street or something. Yeah, we were in the French Quarter. Somewhere in the French Quarter, I don't remember exactly. Anyway, Fanny's got this boyfriend who is this gloriously ancient extra. He can't see, can't hear it. He's got to be about 90 years old. The AD walks up to him, sticks him on a bicycle, puts him about two miles down the road, and says, when you see yeah. Fanny walk up to Josh, that means the scene has begun. You should start riding as fast as you can, because you've got news. Fade out. Fade back in. It's about 15 minutes later. The director's doing some last-minute lighting adjustments on the set. Fanny walks up to him with a character question. The old guy down the road now thinks it's his cue. He starts riding like a bat out of hell. Fanny and the director are oblivious to all this because they're having an in-depth discussion. Me and the rest of the guys are going crazy off camera because the AD is running as fast as he possibly can, waddling down the middle of the road after this guy screaming, Stop! Stop! The guy isn't going to stop because he can't hear a thing. The heat, the heat, go ahead. It's about 10 or 15 minutes later. The director's ready with the shot and everything. He says, OK, let's get everything. Where's the guy with, with, with the bicycle? The AD walks up to him, he says, well, um, uh, he, he, he went home. But he said it was a pleasure working with you. No. Uh, excuse me. If you don't eat, you oh, no dessert. Oh, killer, I'm sorry. It's my favorite spaghetti, too. Where did you learn to talk so fast? Mm. Where do you think? Good. Oh. Good. Josh. Hmm. Y you shaved. Yeah. Hey, Larry. You, you didn't shave. Uh, no, I caught Josh's show. I want to be a little more macho. <laughs> oh, <laughs> grubby, grubby. It doesn't work as well. Larry. It doesn't work. Larry. <laughs> Honey. Okay. Kate, would you kick Larry? Uh, Larry. Larry. Mm. Huh? Fine. Honey, would you pass me the salt? You're looking forward to yeah. the concert. <clears throat> Don't eat too much of this. Hey, hey. Are you all right? Yes, I'm I'm fine. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Hmm. How's this? Watch, Larry. One handed. <laughs> hey. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think of Fanny? <laughs> She's like a pig. Honey. Well, she can't hear me, dear. Watch with Fanny, you eat like a pig. You see. What's the matter as long as you're making I'll tell you one thing, you know, if this kid of ours doesn't stop living in a sexual okay. fantasy world or something, he's going to come down with something serious. With um, uh, does everybody have what they want? Would anybody like seconds? Mm, I'll have seconds. Well, I would like to make a toast hmm? to Daddy and his 60th birthday oh. and in two months to be a proud grandpa. Yeah. Grandpa Hart. Grandpa Hart. Grandpa Hart. I hate that. Will you wait, do me one favor? Will you, darling, please, when it arrives, he, she, what? A, do not let the child ever call me granddaddy, grandfather, grandpa, grand anything. Please, I hate it. Well, what's he supposed Jesus. to call you? A nickname. God, I used to call my grandmother uh, Noonie, for instance. Noonie? Yeah, Noonie. Uh, oh, and with respect. Yeah, I, I called my grandpa Jaju. Well, it doesn't have to, uh, you know, be. What's um, uh, uh, granddaddy and. Gaelic. I don't know. It's, um, Granddaddy. That scotching is not funny. Scotch is a drink. Well, you know what I mean. I know what you mean, but I don't understand why you're so worried about becoming a grandfather. I don't like it. God, I don't know what's wrong with you, because I'm looking forward to it myself. With you, it could be next week. With him, so it could be already. What did he eat? Well, I like Nooney. Wait a minute. This is a Democratic family. I say we take a vote. All those in favor of a Nooney like name. Raise your hands. Okay, all those in favor of Grandpa Harv. Hmm? 
Yeah. I like charging. Reminds me of the time we got that cat. Remember that? Cat? Yeah, Katie's cat. The one we couldn't figure out a name for. Katie kept coming up with names like Fru Fru and Fluffy and stuff like that. So we all got together. And every single name we came up with, Kate didn't want to have anything to do with it. So finally, Pop turns and whispers to the rest of us, the next thing out of her mouth is going to be what we call the cat. Right? Now, Katie, you know, you know I love you, but at six years old, you were a pain in the ass. And I turn around and I say, what the hell? Let's call the cat Bananas. You say, Bananas? We might as well call him that because the family gets up on their feet and says, that's it. Good night, Mama. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. 20 minutes on goodbye. Mm. Dinner was fantastic. Lovely to have seen you. Be goodbye, early goodbye. tomorrow, okay? We will be there bright and early. Oh, hey, Josh. Look, you rented a limousine. How about they run out of Ferraris? Oh, yeah, they gave them to all the big TV stars. Keep your eye on it. It'd be perfect behind my hearse. Stop it. That's all right. You're still in the will. Well, I don't think it's funny. God, you are being morbid tonight. Yeah. Really Why don't you pull yourself together? People are talking. People are talking. Hi, Josh. Josh. Good night, Mom. Josh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He has some brownies for Fanny. Thanks. Good night, Kelly. Goodbye, goodbye. Remember the time we were all sitting around talking, saying good night and good night? Night, Josh. Good night. Oh, hey, Fanny. There's a Big Mac about a mile down the highway. Great idea, Mark. Night. Wrap up, Peggy. What is the matter with you, Harv? Huh? What do you mean? I'm telling you, you did nothing but talk about death. That is an important part. You're lucky I'm not an Eskimo. You know what happens when they die? Family puts them out in the ice, they're frozen solid, a bear comes along and eats them, and they eat the polar bear, and then you become part of their life. Good night, Corey. Good night. Fanny, love that. I say things and I do things, and afterwards I don't believe it. I just. Why? No, look. The kids, if they're, they're grown, they're gone off. They got their own lives. Oh, God, I miss them so much. And then when I see them, I behave like some monster. I don't. How the hell could I do what I did to Josh tonight? My, my Josh. I, my love. I love him with all my heart and I know soul. You do, Jesus sweet. Christ, it's like I'm trying to cut them off and to lose them, but I love them. Oh, Christ, if I lose them, I lose you. I would rather be dead. Never, honey. I want to die, so help me God. I just... Honey, come back to bed. What the hell are you doing? What... Come back to bed. Honey. Oh, no, Christ. I can't. I think I'd rather have some fatal disease and know it than live with something I don't understand. And when earlier I had it... <laughs> I had a dream that I finally had built the world's tallest, most beautiful building, just so I could jump off it. You know, you know what I was trying to do just now? Bicycle myself to death. Oh, Harvey. Well, Honey, get off the bike. Come no. Back, and we'll talk. Come on, off the bike now, right away. No. Come on. All right. We're just going to talk about this until you feel better. Honey, if you were having such a bad time, why didn't you waken me? I didn't want to bother you. Come on, get into bed. Oh, 
Oh, what you have this blood pressure cup oh. for, huh? Oh. I don't see how high I could get it. And how high did you get it? Not very high. It just shows how fit you are. Oh, oh Harvey, don't oh. ever say such terrible things again. I tell you, if you did anything silly, neither Maggie nor Josh nor Katie or I would ever forgive you as long as we live. Maybe you should talk to somebody. Maybe you should see a psychiatrist or something. Everyone wants me to see a psychiatrist. Who's everyone? No. I opened the presents that Josh got me. Mm-hmm. Know what it was? What? Beautiful new fishing reel. Oh, hmm. We haven't been on our annual fishing trip for four years. Oh, hell, you'll go again soon. He's trying to tell me something. So take him fishing, huh? Mm -hmm. <sighs> you know what the card said? Josh's card? Yeah. for the legs I'll never have. I can just sit in my cozy room with some Saturday Claire's three sit-ups in front of this day show, and I'll be guilty. Oh, I'll be guilty. But it'll be raining, and there's nothing I can do. I can't afford to get my skin in the water. I did, I just did. I knew when my mom and dad were gonna have a fight, and I, I knew my sister didn't really like me. And I knew the day my dad went to work that he was never coming back. And I know something about you. And I think you need a friend to talk to. Oh, Drive through. I'll meet you in front of the house. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Morning. Morning. Uh, look, I just had time to go and make some of the coffee. I had to leave the pancake mix. Could you do me a favor and fix them for me? Sure. I go meet the guy with all the party equipment. Yep. Okay. Thank you, love. Join you later. You're all right.
morning, hon. Good morning. How did you sleep? I didn't. Want an egg? No, thanks. I'm sure Corey's got some bacon in the oven. You wouldn't like a nice protein breakfast? No, I just want some cereal. How come you didn't sleep? Because that bed in my room has to be one of the most uncomfortable beds I've ever slept in. There's this huge bar that sticks in the middle of my back all night. Oh, I'm sorry. I might want to do something about that if the grandparents come to stay. With I will. I'll tell Corey about it. What happened to my bed? I sent it into storage. I thought the couch in there might make the room look a little bit bigger, you know? It's a great bed. Were you by any chance on the phone about 2 a.m. this morning? Yes. I saw the light. I wasn't sure if it was you or Corey. I was on the phone at 2 and again at 4. I think I started around 10. Why? Because I was worried about Chutney. I was calling and calling all night and kept getting the sound of my own voice on the answering machine. Hello, oh, you've reached 555-0423. Oh, Honey, I'm sure Chutney's just fine. How can she be fine if she's been alone all night? Well, you don't know that for sure. Mom, he never came home. Or perhaps he just chose not to pick up the phone. And honey. why would he do that? I don't know. I do, because probably he's been with Louise. He's been flirting with him and trying to get him in the sack since the first day they started rehearsals. I'll bet you anything that's what he's doing. Do you really think that Steve would do something that silly so soon? Well, the way things have been going lately, I wouldn't put it past him. God, if he's with her already, I'll die. Katie, it is not the end of the world. Well, perhaps he was with whatever her name is, and you'll just have to face that, all right? It's part of growing up, and you'll handle it, that's all. Son of a bitch. Jilla strikes again. Wax the floors. Never told me. I... Good morning. Good morning. Take this with me. I'm going to catch a 10 o'clock mass. What? Going to church. Bye. Church? I'm Harry Burrell, and these are the headline stories at this hour. Denver, FAA investigators probing the cause of jetliner crash in the Rockies. Three hundred twenty-four lives lost. Los Angeles, County Health Department warns about rates of influenza. Anti flu shots advised for the elderly. These and other stories coming up. Weather-wise, little change is expected, but there is a hint of rain later this week. Oh, Keith, I'm sorry to bother you. I hope I didn't get you in the middle of an emergency or anything. It's Harvey I'm worried about. He... he's... Uh, well, I don't know what he is. He was weeping last night. He was talking about suicide. I'm beside myself. I don't know what to do. I know. I've had a word with him, and if it's worth anything to you at all, I've given him a complete physical checkup, and there's nothing wrong with him there. But I have suggested I think it's time for some therapy. What is your first name, please? Or only your first name? Marvin. Marvin. No, I do not think it is Marvin. What is your first name, really? Uh, Harvey. <laughs> Marvin's my middle name. Harvey Marvin. It's a musical name. Yeah. You're musical, yes? Well, uh... But, uh I... You play... You, you are musical. Yeah, I... Uh... Uh, well, Harvey. For twenty dollars, I read Crystal. Fifteen for you. Twenty dollars for the left form. Forty dollars for both. And fifty dollars for ears. You read ears? Oh, yes, autology. One of the earliest enlightenments. Very profound. But, of course, it, it is not my eternal favorite. My favorite is feet. Feet? An ancient oriental wisdom passed down from the most holy ones, the sacred monks of Tibet. <laughs> Whatever you say. Give me the whole enchilada. Oh, bravo, Harvey, Marvin. Lend me your ears. Oh, Harvey, it's huh? beautiful ears. The lobe is very long. It makes you very intelligent. Oh. Very intelligent. Let me see. Oh, you have a long lifeline. You're going to live a very long time. Mm -hmm. 
That's reassuring. Oh, you've been worried about your health. Yeah. Huh? Oh, Harvey. What? You've been married a long time. Yes. Well, your wife, she loves you very much, Harvey. She finds you very attractive. My God, well, I find her very attractive, but... You're uh... having a little problem. Yeah. Yes, I... But you have much love to give, Harvey. Even though you are not giving much lately. Oh, Harvey, it's very important you know about the feet. The foot is the soul of the libido. <laughs> oh, Harvey, what beautiful lines. Oh, yes. <gasps> look the way your metatarsal meets the phalanges, right across the arch. It's very powerful, beautiful arch. Mm -hmm. Do you know what they say anthropologically? They believe that a man ran before he walked. I think, Harvey, you are a runner. You're going too fast in your mind. You go much too fast. You must yeah. slow down, Harvey. You must slow down. Yeah. All your problems are in your mind. <laughs> yeah, there, lads. You know, nobody's played with my toes since I was a kid. My mother. Your she mother to... was a wonderful woman. Yeah. And, and she used to uh, play with it, and, and she'd recite that nursery thing. That uh, you know, this little um... piggy. Piggy went to Poland. Poland. And this little piggy went to Rome. Oh. And this little piggy ate pork chops. Huh? And this little piggy had none. Oh. <laughs> but this little piggy, Harvey, this little piggy went. Ooh, all the way home. Oh, 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 my God. Oh. It has long been a custom of mine to uh, invite a parishioner to uh, read from the gospel. However, I do have an added distinct pleasure in welcoming a new member to this parish of ours. And this new member happens to have been an old college chum of mine at Notre Dame. From those college days, he went on to become a famous architect. His name is Harvey Fairchild. And it has been some time, he tells me, since he has been in the house of God. It's fitting that he's an architect, because Jesus Christ was perhaps the greatest architect of them all. And when Jesus said, Thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, it occurred to me that I could say, Thou art Harvey, and upon this parish I will build my church. Harvey Fairchild. Mr. Fairchild will read from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 28 through 30. <laughs> 28, 28, 28. You have heard that it was said to the ancients, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say to you that anyone who so much as looks with lust at a woman has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If the right eye is an occasion of sin to thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is better for thee that one of thy members should perish than that the whole body it should be thrown into hell. And if, uh, if, the, if the right hand <clears throat> is an occasion of sin to thee, 
Cut it off and uh, cast it from thee. For it is better for thee that one of thy members should be lost than that the whole body should go into hell. Let's have some plain speaking here. Adultery is a mortal sin. It is a sin against God. It is a sin against humanity. It is a sin against the church. It's better than that classic shit I've been trying to go and play. I love it. <laughs> yeah, let me no, that's not too much of a problem. So seldom. Sounds like Juilliard was a good idea. Having a bad time, darling? <laughs> oh, my love. Why don't you just let it all go, huh? <laughs> oh, darling. Oh. Oh, my love. <laughs> there, there. <laughs> let it go, honey. <laughs> dear, oh, dear. This young man of yours has really caused some problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Just let it all go. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I didn't mean to lay all this on you this weekend. I know you have enough on your plate as it is. It's all right, darling. since I was about six. Mm. <laughs> oh, I wish I didn't have to feel this. I wish I could just turn the feeling off and not feel anything. No, don't. <laughs> don't say that. Just be grateful that you can feel. Wouldn't it be terrible to be someone who went through their whole life without feeling anything? Life's so short, Katie. You have to make every moment count. It's not easy to do, you know. I don't think there's a day goes by where I don't turn my back on some small thing or some issue somewhere. And it's so short, Katie. If you're not careful, the days go by and all you have time for is regret. No. 
Better to be someone who can seize the issue and let those feelings come through. Mm. You know, you're right. This bed is a lethal weapon. <laughs> I on the airplane. The first time I tried to get on the airplane, I was kicked out the plane. Oh my God, did you at least give her a tranquilizer or something? No, oh, no, I didn't get her a tranquilizer. I didn't even have a tranquilizer. I tried to get on the plane and I couldn't. It didn't matter. I'm here. It doesn't. Wait a minute. The least you could have done was call first. I couldn't call. I couldn't call because I was on a flight. I had to take seven airplanes to get out of here. Hey, how can I take the time to give you a call when I'm up in the sky? I Great to oh. see you again. Thank you. Great to see you. Truly, again. truly, truly great. Thank you. Love seeing you. Mm. Mm. I hope I wasn't too tough on you out there. Mm. No, I as a matter I, of fact, I, I function as a priest the way I functioned on the football field. And here you are out in, the, out in the grandstands watching me take it right up the middle again. And uh, I, do, I hope I wasn't offensive. Oh, no. <laughs> baby. Pluck your right eye out, and if it offends you, cut your hand off, it offends you. It sounds mighty tough. It sounds like some Arabic justice. And of course, this is a Christian society we live in. And uh, mm -hmm. I didn't mean, I, uh, it's just to be taken figuratively, of course, not literally. What? But we're all failed Catholics. That's, that's the very crux of the matter. Yeah. Uh, speaking of adultery, in terms of, of commitment, uh, that uh, anything, anything that is less than a full commitment adulterates at uh, a, a, a marriage, or as you would adulterate a substance. And if you adulterate a substance, it makes it less than genuine. It makes, uh, uh, conversely, it makes a marriage yeah, uh, listen, uh, less, less than, uh, less than uh, genuine. If you adulterate mm. this, uh, this, uh, this uh, wine in this flask, you would make it uh, less than genuine. If you wanted it, it would listen, be less than the reason. Is. That's Jesus. That's the very crux of the matter. And, uh, and, and as such, uh, we are failed. All of us. I'm failed. I'm a failed. I'm a failed Catholic. You're yeah. a failed. The Pope himself is a failed Catholic because who, Look, who, who is see, able what I wanted to, to emulate the most perfect this. life, oh, God. the most perfect life, in his life, which is the life of Jesus Christ himself? Please. No one is able to do that. Tony, no 
You have not coming, changed one coming, damn coming, bit coming. from 36 years ago. I'm trying to tell and you, you that I've got to no. talk to you. I committed a mortal sin. Well, if you've got to talk and to me, then get it off your chest. Listen to me. Can I use your phone? Hmm? <laughs> Uh-huh. You're a cop out, Harvey. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh, hello, uh, this is uh, Harvey Fairchild. Is the doctor there, please? Harvey Fairchild. Yeah, is this, is, this is Harvey Fairchild. Is the doctor there, please? This is Harvey Fairchild. Uh, no, I, I know this is the exchange. Would you please tell him that I've got... This is Look, I don't care if he's in surgery. This is an emergency. Failed. You tell him to stay there. I'm coming over. I'll tell you later. Good luck, Harvey. Oh, but you have to have someone with you when you lie like that down. Dr. Romanus. Oh, Dr. Yeah, Keith Romanus. Nurse, nurse, please. Would you Take paging? Oh, Keith Romanus. Right this way, sir. Thank you, Dr. Romanus. Come on, it's going to be all right, right this way. Paging Dr. Romanus. Paging Dr. Romanus, please. Oh, Dr. Romanus. Here we go. Dr. Alex Paul. Would you hear me with this? They need this in the inhalation therapy right now. Please, this is an emergency. Take it okay? easy. He'll be here. I just paid. All right. Let him laugh. Come on. Oh, Rod. Oh, Jesus. Oh, uh, can I see you? Yes. Can I see you? Yes. Right in okay. here. Okay. Right in here. 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 Oh, God, oh, God. Shh. What the hell is it? I don't know. It's in my, my crotch. I don't know if it's, it's skin cancer or venereal or what. It's, it's burning and oh, itching. You drop your pants and jump up on the table. Oh, my God, how did it happen so fast? Oh, honey, how could you get something venereal? Getting my fortune told. What? Never mind. Oh, that's terrible. Huh? That's the worst case I've ever seen. Of what? Crabs. Crabs? I hope you know I gave up my Sunday sailing for you, old buddy. Oh. Well, I hope you know how much it's appreciated, old buddy. Are you going to tell her tonight? That depends on what you tell me. Damn it. Shit. Where are my cufflinks? Um, top drawer. No, look there, are no cufflinks. Honey, they were there two days I ago. looked in the top drawer. There are no cufflinks in the top drawer. All right? Wrong. Well, you just say that top drawer. Come in. Come in. Hi, Maggie. Oh, don't you look lovely? I don't feel lovely. Oh, pregnancy makes a woman look so radiant. What can I do for you, darling? Uh, do you have a wrap or anything I could use in case it gets cold? Sure. I can't guarantee it'll be blue. Oh, anything. If I only have a black one, it's any good, really. Here. It's not going to look very good, darling. Just, just put it on if it gets cold, okay? Damn it. Did you and uh, Larry kiss and make up last night? No. Uh -uh. He went to sleep. I mean, I can't blame him. I mean, I look like a blimp, and I get up six, seven times a night just to pee. It's not a turn on. Medieval custom. I say you break your ass trying to get him in the shirt, and then you cover the shirt up with a jacket so they can't be seen. <laughs> Nice shirt, though, huh? Nice shirt. Neither do I. you. Just remember one thing, Maggie. The last two months of pregnancy are the pit. But it does have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you're going to have something wonderful to show for it, huh? But did you feel like this when you were pregnant? Sure! <laughs> Especially with Josh. Listen, pregnancy is the most important thing a woman does in her whole life. And you don't go to school for it. Nobody tells you about it. You're not taught anything. Mm. But listen, I went and had two more kids after that, so you know it's got to have a happy ending. Jesus. Well, that did it. Hey, guess what, huh? Just guess what? I'm not going to go. I am not going to go out there and face those people. God damn it. Will you? Look at how I look. 
You'll believe this? A beautiful jacket. Haven't had it on for a while. And look how a person looks, huh? Like an old waiter. Supposed to be in a retirement home, for Christ's sake. Or a turtle coming out of a shell. Yeah, I think you look wonderful. Uh, you what? Uh, oh, repeat that, would you, darling? I huh? said, I think you look wonderful. Happy birthday, Daddy. I think you look wonderful. So now you can go down looking like an asshole in front of all of the people. What the hell are you trying to do to me? Oh, what the hell is the use? What the hell is the use? Okay, What's it's okay. wrong with him? I don't know. Oh. And he's like this every oh. birthday, every Christmas. This is different. This is different this time. I mean, he hardly talks to me anymore. I don't even think he's excited about the baby. Oh. You heard what he said last night. Honey, he didn't mean what oh, he said why last did he night. Say now, it. Maggie, Maggie, don't get upset, sweetie. He didn't mean what he said last night. He doesn't mean what he's saying these days. Really, he doesn't. I just think that he's having a very very bad time right now, but you mustn't let it bother you, darling. Let me deal with it. The only thing you have to think about is Junior here, and don't you let anything in the world interfere with that, okay? Don't let it get to you, huh? No, it's Maggie. It's just pregnancy, huh? Believe me. Well, I'm gonna walk down. Oh, honey, you can ride down with us. No, I, th I think I'd like to walk. Darling, are you sure? Yeah. The fresh air will do me good. Who's Megan? She went on ahead. Oh. Uh, well, they're there. We're late. My name is Father Berigori. Megan Bartlett. Megan. Mm. God, it's big enough. They'll see it in Catalina. I'm glad you like it. Hey, Hog, happy birthday! Hi, Ed. What the hell is that? Oh, I thought we should have a fortune teller, so I've hired our resident Malibu psychic. Well, hello. Oh, uh, Madam Carrie, this is my husband, Harvey. Happy birthday, Harvey. Yeah, <laughs> hot dog. Jesus. Happy birthday, hey, Harvey. Oh, hey, how the hell are you? God damn, it's been a long time. Where have you people been? We haven't seen you for so long. Tuesday. Tuesday. Now I just want to see if you remember that. Oh, happy birthday! Waiting for you. Where you see the cake? The cake. Isn't this wonderful? It's just like the place. It's absolutely terrific. How are you? Oh, hi. How are you? How are you? Twelve. Hey, hey, Tony. How the hell are you? This is Janice. This is Tony. Tony. Tony Baragoni. A father. He's a father. This is my wife, Gillian. Hi, Holly. Holly. Oh, happy birthday. Tony, this is Tony. This is Holly. Yeah, we'll see you. We'll be right back. Did you just make something home? Did you know each other? No. Janice, what? Janice, what? You did? Well, I know. What the hell? She's a client, dear. Happy birthday, Tony. I think everybody's here. You can tell them to start soon. Okay. Have you seen uh, Dr. Amanis? No, no, I haven't seen him. I don't think he's here yet. No. Pardon me, madam. What might I have this dance? Oh, Josh. I'm... Oh, come on! Oh, yeah, come, come on, you're the kid. Oh, come on, huh? <laughs> Please get tired. Because you do that wacky two-step. No, you're still my very favorite dancer. Thank you, darling. 
You're worried about Pop, aren't you? Yep. Yep. So am I. What? What's? What's bugging him? Oh, I don't know, hon. Perhaps it's being 60. Well, that's ridiculous. He has a picture of perfect life. Well, I guess he doesn't think so. Hey, Belmont. Thank you. Happy birthday, huh? Thank you. You hear what happened to Fred right in the middle of his back swing? They called uh, paramedics. He's gone. He thought he was having gas. Yeah. What the hell's the matter with you? Your eyes are all bloodshot. You look lost. How's your bowel movements? Hey, listen. After 60, the first thing that causes your bowel movements, you know what happened to me. Remember? 12 o'clock at night, I'm standing there, dribbles. Nothing. The urologist got a new technique, Roto-Rooter. It's a big, long thing. And it's got a little television camera on it and a, and a knife. And he puts it up your urethral canal. There's no incision, no, no scars, no nothing. But you can look over on a, on a monitor and... and yeah. It can happen, but happen. Life's fortune. You had your fortune told lately? No. Go with me. Where are we going? Trust me. What do you mean, trust me? Trust me. Trust this is something you are never going to forget. You right, Bobby. Thank you, Harold. You don't look a day over 60. <laughs> you never know what the future has in store, Belmont. Now, you go into that tent and just ask for Madame Carey. Huh? Madame Carey. She's going to curl your toes. Talk about a roll over. I'll have a ball of vodka, please. Hey, Josh. You want to train? Why not? Oh, why not? Uh, hello. I want to dance with my favorite mother-in-law. <laughs> so, Gil, who's the best dancer you know? You are, Larry. Mm-hmm. But at the risk of being an unpopular mother-in-law, I think you should spend a little more time with your lady. She's being very fragile right now. Gil, I tried. I know, hon. Why don't you try again? Right now? Why not? But I want to arrange it. Get a dance oh. with a lady, would you, kind sir? Not right now, love. <laughs> Terrific party. And I can't cut it anymore. I just say, I can't cut you. Terrible. Honestly, God, sweetie, I, I, I've got to get the hell out of here. I've got to go up to the house. So please. Harvey, you go up to the house right now. And I'm going to. And I don't mean up to the house. I mean forever. What the hell is that? Now, I know you're going through some kind of personal hell right now. I know we have our problems. You hate birthdays and you hate getting old and all of that. But honestly, Harvey, I think you've got some kind of priority on those feelings. I bet you there isn't a person in this room who isn't absolutely terrified of their mortality. What you better face something, my friend. You better face it. We are all going to die one day. Now, it seems to me you have three choices. You can take your own life. That's a stupid and vicious thing to do. And what kind of a legacy is that to leave your kids, hmm? Or you can look at what's right under your very nose, which is that you have three beautiful children who adore you. You have a wife who happens to think you're the best thing since chopped liver. You can take my hand. Let me be your mate. You can be my mate. Let us be equals. We'll go through the time we have left together, side by side, and face it, Harvey. Or you can do what you have been doing, which is being a child, sulking, pissing it all away, just acting so dumb it's ridiculous. You can do all of that. That'll be just fine, but you'll be doing it without me, because that is not the man I married, and it's not the man I want, OK? It's just me. Do you know? I remember the time we used to smile all the time. Uh, Come on now, you can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I also remember the time we used to sit and have a big cup of tea and just talk. I miss that. Oh, Corey, I promise you tomorrow, come hell or high water, we will find the time to sit and have a nice cup of tea. Good. Oh, by the way, when do you want me to bring Hobbs cake in? Oh, uh, 
I guess now is as good a time as any. You better go in. You're gonna catch a cold, sweetheart. Okay. I'll go get it. There we go. All right. Andre, do me a favor. Would you go in and cut out the lights? Okay. How about you? Would you help him? All right. Paul, oh, here we come. Happy birthday. You got it. I wish you'd shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Killer. All right. Happy birthday. Oh. Happy birthday. Oh. See you, Darling, I can tell you're upset. <sighs> Please look at me. Mr. Fairchild. I, I, I might be existing, Mr. but Fairchild. I'm not living. I'd Hi, Jesse. Hi, Mrs. Fairchild. I'm Jesse Grant, George's yeah. son. Oh, George's son? Yeah, How this about is my that? girlfriend, Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Hi, How good are to you? meet you. Nice we to meet just you. wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, well, thank you. You've done it. Yeah, thank you. Have a good time. Thank yeah, you. Lovely party. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Look, I'm sorry that I was dumping on you. Harvey! Darling, and I have some birthday cake. Happy birthday. Thanks. Where was I? Oh, look, it... It's your fault. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention. This evening, you know, would not be complete if we didn't get one song from Gillian. So how about it? Yeah. Let's no, do it. Honey, Come listen on. to me. You have to. Anyway, it's all your fault because I knew all along you'd never leave me, no matter how much of an imbecile I was, because I'm too adorable. Oh. Didn't make it. Um, uh, this is dear of you. Um... Uh, I've had an um, allergy for about a, a week now, and I don't know if I can even sing. Oh, come on. Uh, I, if I did, it would be about two octaves lower, and you wouldn't like that. Oh, one song, please. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, we want to do um, passion something. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, about A flat, something like that. Excuse me just a minute. Play something, Joe. Does that mean what I think it means? It's benign. <gasps> the pathologist is a big fan of yours. He made his day. <gasps> oh, God. No mistake. No. You're sure. Hi, Keith. Oh, Keith, thank you. Hey, dear. dear. Darling, what the hell is going on? Oh, Harvey. Come with me, hon. Huh? Come on. Holly, something wrong? No, Father, something's right. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. No, in fact, I have three restaurants. I'm opening another one in Santa Monica. God, I've always wanted to own a restaurant. Right. It doesn't matter, but you have an opening. No, Father, I'm not kidding. I never had But I, I love God. But I did love God until I met this guy I married for 10 minutes. He said, oh, fuck you, you asshole. Oh, 
I'm probably going to be punished by the god. I don't it's even believe him, but I lost my feet until I saw you deny it. I wasn't sure whether it was the collar or... My dear, do you... Confessionally you speaking. You this collar means... Uh, I'm very salads. sexually attracted to you. And, uh... Well, so would I many, many times. And, oh, my God, but if we made love, you, you could give me absolution. Me of, of someone I knew in college. Oh, good. Were you attracted to her? <laughs> Were you? You know, I knew this guy that wrote my Before sister's I nose when I was a kid, and I always thought that's why he became a priest. Because he tied something. her up in a chair, and it was like... You know, I you thought he was, like, overcompensating. Oh, no, what, what did it feel like? What, I, it was just like an irritation at first. I've had for about a week on the right side. Yeah, just a little. Well, hold it. Let me, let me see. Open up. Huh? Oh, yes. No, that could be serious. Unless you keep your mouth shut, at least for a week. Uh, do you mind if I dance with your wife? Just nod yes. I get to dance with you next. Hello. Father Baragoni told me you'd come back to the church, and I thought, just the three of us, a nice little retreat. And <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't appeal to you. Let me sell your house. I'm not oh. kidding, Harvey. I could get you a gill, a cozy little cottage for two. No kids, just me dropping by. Excuse me. Oh, How are you, love? Fine. Listen, I know you want to apologize for the rotten way you've been treating me lately. Not necessary. Do you forgive me? I'll tell you something else. I know just what I want the kid to call me. Oh, uh -huh. what's that? Grandpa. Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Wow. You're such beautiful ears. I love your ears. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Best as you have to come. <laughs> what about your ears? I don't know. It's mm -hmm. very just... Oh, hey. Excuse me. Let's go. Oh. That works. My God, we're going on our second honeymoon. I don't want you getting sick on me. just can't be me You can learn about life in a looking glass Maybe learn some things you never dreamed you'd know Leave me though in time fate will show That the looking glass is true and in your heart, you'll agree That's life that you see And you'll know who you are And be glad you're you If you look at your life in a looking glass You may see some things you don't want to see You may see the day your youth slipped away And you'll say, hey, that just can't be me You 
can learn about life in a looking glass. Maybe learn some things you never dreamed you'd know. Believe me, though, in time, fate will show that the looking glass is true. And in your heart, you'll agree. That's life that you see, and you'll know who you are and be glad you're you. Glad.